Okay, so we're going to go over day three of making the propeller. So this is straight out of the carver, um, straight out of the lathe. And so after it comes out of the lathe, I pick a template um, that coordinates with the bolt pattern. This is going to get an SAE2 face, so it's going to be six and a half inches wide, side to side. And then I'm just going to trace that out. And after I'm done tracing it out, I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and cut out all the extra around the hub that you see there. Uh, make my circle on both sides so that I can make sure that I stay within alignment on both sides. And the bandsaw is probably my favorite tool to work with here in the shop. Um, this part is probably one of my favorite parts of the build process. And I'm just taking that extra off of the hub, making sure I stay on the outside of the line. After this, I'm gonna take it over to a drum sander and then I'll come right up to that line. Um, but it's very important not to get inside that line because it'll take away my perfect circle there. I have to be really careful not to take too much material off. Um, if I'm not careful, I can slip or I can gouge the propeller a little bit and it won't ruin it, but I have to stand a lot extra to get it out. And then I also have to do that to the opposite side to keep it balanced. So anything I do here that's not symmetrical is going to mess up my vertical balance. And this is all freehand on the bandsaw. So I have to be, you know, really careful and I'm just doing it by eye to make sure that I take off even amounts and get it nice and smooth. And of course, the better job I do with the bandsaw, the less work I have to do on the sander. So it took me a really long time to get good at this part, <laughs> but um, now, now it's my favorite part to do. I cut those off about a half an inch longer than the top needs to be, so I have that little bit of extra. And this is my drum sander, so I'm just sanding it to up to the line that I drew earlier. Uh, this again is where my vertical balance comes into account. So any material that I take off that's not even is going to show up when I vertically balance it. It's generally not you know the difficult part of it the vertical balance is usually um, my easier one to get so i'm just making sure that i blend the hub into the blade this one's a little bit more challenging because the hub is a lot bigger than the blade um, so it makes a sharper turn but my drum sander is the diameter of that is just perfect for fitting into it so it's not horrible. Actually, the tinier props, the props for half VW that are only a half an inch thick, are actually a lot harder to do than a thicker prop like this. Um, but the fact that it does have kind of a skinnier neck wrist area there makes it a little bit more challenging. And because if you have any little bump in it, it definitely shows. So you have to make sure you have that very, very smooth transition for the profile of the prop to look right. And I do a lot of it by feel. So I'll stop and I'll feel it and make sure I don't have any bumps. Sometimes you can feel the bumps uh, better than you can see them. Um, so I spend a lot of time stopping and feeling it and stopping and feeling it and <laughs> seeing, make sure that my sides are symmetrical. And um, it probably takes me about 10 or 15 minutes to do that whole hub. So after that, I do the belt sander. I don't know why I um, don't have a video of me doing the belt sander, but 
I'll take a belt sander with 60 grit and go over the whole thing to take all the lines out that the lathe left. Um, and then after I do that, I sand it with about a 60 to 80 grit orbital sander. So this is just going to take out the lines that all of that the belt sander made. And mahogany is really, really nice to work with. It sands so fast. Um, but it also allows you to screw up really fast too. So you have to be careful and not be too aggressive with your grit of your sandpaper, how much pressure you put on it because you can dip it very, really fast. But it's also a very light wood. So that's what's really great about it with a propeller this size. It actually lightens the weight of the propeller quite a bit. So it's also beautiful and it's perfect for the World War I replicas. This prop is gonna go on a DR1 triplane. Um, I'll have a picture of it at the end of the video, um, but the, the vintage mahogany look is just perfect for those planes. Um, I go, I'm always very careful about my trailing edge. You want it to be sharp, but you don't want it to be so sharp that it can be dented easily, but you want it sharp enough that the air is gonna come off together. Um, while the pop's spinning. So here I'm going to do the tips. The tips are a really important part too. Round tips are generally quieter and just probably a tiny bit more efficient. Um, we thin these down with the belt sander and then I just go over it again. Same process. Take the lines out of the belt sander with the orbital sander. And you just want to thin those down so that they go through the air smoothly. The tips are going to be traveling roughly 750 feet per second at cruise and can get up to 850 feet per second at max RPM. Um, so here I'm just balancing it, seeing where I'm at. This is my first balance, so it's off by quite a bit, but um, that's to be expected. Mahogany has an inconsistent grain within it, so sometimes it can be a little bit trickier to balance. But this one actually is not really too bad. My vertical balance is really close. So I'll just go ahead and mark my heavy sides and then I go back and I sand some more. And I'll just do this process over and over and over until I get it balanced like that. <laughs> so my vertical balance is perfect there. I think I'm still just a little bit tiny, tiny heavy on this side, um, so I'll have to go back and sand that out. I don't think I got a video of it sitting still sideways. Sometimes you're just so happy that it finally balanced, you're like, yes, move on to the next part of it. Um, but then after we get it you know, perfectly, perfectly balanced to where it sits still, we drill the bolt pattern. and we have a nice end mill that we've had for a very long time and it does a good job. Um, this is probably, a lot of people ask me about CNC machines. This is probably one part that I do wish that we had a CNC machine for. Um, I think it'd make it a lot quicker, a lot easier. Usually the guys drill the bolt pattern for me, but um, this, it has to be absolutely perfect and it just, is a nerve-wracking part for me because if you mess this up everything you've done up to this point is just not airworthy so it is one of the more important well probably the most important part um and then when we're done it gets the stamp of approval it's going to get the diameter and the pitch on one side and it's going to get the serial number on the opposite side and I have my concentrating face because <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard for me to get them all nice and straight and perfect and not all wonky on there. So after I get it stamped, I'll um, color in the numbers so that they're easier to see. And then it's going to get three coats of varnish. Oh yeah, I nitpick it to death. <laughs> I go back and I'm like sand this little bit and this little bit because every time you see it in a different light, you see different things that you would like to fix. Um, I put three coats of varnish on it. I didn't video that part because I didn't want to get varnish all over my phone. <laughs> That's what I used to video all this with. 
um, but it's three coats of Helmsman Spar Urethane. Um, the coating can generally last, you know, up to 10 years as long as it's well taken care of. Um, the silver inside seals all the end grain in the bolt holes. And then this one got a sticker that was period specific, kind of authentic to what the original plane would have had on it. And I really don't mind doing that for people. Um, I really appreciate what they go through to have a really period correct plane. And there it is.